Thanks, buddy. <laughs> Whenever anyone asks me if I shipwrecked on an island and I could only have one book with me, what would it be? I always say how to build a boat. <laughs> I took a lie detector test. No, I didn't. <laughs> I have a parrot, and the parrot's been making long distance phone calls. She's pissed me off. They have feed and they asked him about it. And he denied it. If he admitted it, we could have worked something out. But he denied it, so I came up with a plan to catch a mean the actor was going on the roof of the building across the street and look through my telescope into my own apartment and watch the parrot while I was gone. So I'm on the roof of the building across the street, but I couldn't find my telescope, so I'm looking through the scope of my deer hunting rifle. And I see him, he hops out of the cage and he goes over to the phone. I can see the numbers he's done, he's making a long distance call. I'm thinking, you know what, I'm just gonna kill him. <laughs> so right before I pull the trigger, I look down onto the street and there's two cops down there, but it's Halloween, so I don't know if they're cops or just people dressed as cops. Which is what cops are anyway. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm thinking, I can't shoot the parrot, maybe they're the real police, and I can't cross the street in the middle of the day carrying a deer hunting rifle. So I went into the alley and I found an empty refrigerator box, and I put the rifle into the box. I'm carrying that across the street in order to not draw attention to myself. <laughs> Meanwhile, the parrot's on the phone, calling the police department, telling there's a guy in the street with a rifle in the box. <laughs> They raid over the police, they come over and then another one drives up. You know how they all like to all show up at once, like seagulls at the beach when you try to eat a sandwich. <laughs> one of them says to me, is there a problem here? And I start thinking about God and how smart he was when he put that little switch in your head so you didn't have to say absolutely everything you were thinking. I said, yes, me, is there a problem here? And I'm thinking, of course there's a problem here. There's a problem everywhere. Where is this some kind of existentialist abstract game show that you're hosting? <laughs> And he said, what are you carrying this thing for? And I said, oh, it's Halloween and this is my costume. And he said, well, what are you supposed to be? And I said, I'm an ant. <laughs> and I said to him, speaking of tangents, so let me ask you something. Do you think that in Europe that Miles Davis is known as Kilometer Davis? <laughs> and he said, all right, get in the car. So I got in the car and I started adjusting the seat in the mirror so I'd be more comfortable behind the wheel. <laughs> and they pulled me out of the car, they handcuffed me, and he said, what do you think of that? I said, it's all right now. If it gets cold out, I only need one minute. And they pushed me into the back of the car and I said, this is great, what year is it? And he said, it's 2009, it already has 80,000 miles on it. And I said, I don't mean that car, I mean, what year is it now? <laughs> he just stared at me. So I stared right back at him. It was a long silence, a silence of mega library jealous. <laughs> and I said to him, you know, I find it kind of attractive. <laughs> Not in a sexual way, more like a platonic hooker. <laughs> and he said, what the hell is the matter with you? <laughs> I said, oh man, I bought a parrot. He didn't know he had an IQ of 165. Plus my ankle was killing me. I tried to go mountain climbing on a relief map. <laughs> Fell off the table onto the floor and twisted my ankle. And I told him how a parrot likes to fake snore really loud until he wakes me up. And when he knows I'm looking at him, he likes to fake talk in his sleep. I'll just be looking over at the parrot, and he'll be standing in the cage like this. <laughs> of course I'm naked, I'm a goddamn bird. <laughs> the cop said, you should be behind bars. I said, you know what I would do if I was there behind bars? I'd drill a hole through one of the bars and put one of those peep poles like in a hotel room door. <laughs> Just to give the illusion of still having some privacy. <laughs> oh no, he's not here right now. <laughs> He'll be back in about two hours. 
the cop said, just shut the hell up. <laughs> just look out the window or something. So I looked out the window, oh my God, what? Oh, I thought I saw an optical illusion. <laughs> what do you mean you thought I did? I thought I did, but I didn't. That's what screwed me up. I'd have been all right if I'd seen it. <laughs> and it started smelling out. I said, oh man, I can't believe it. It always smells on my birthday. And he said, today's your birthday? And I said, no. I just want to prove the primitive linear thinking you would have by taking those two facts and coming to that conclusion. <laughs> and he said, just shut the hell up. <laughs> just look out the other window. So I looked out the other window and I saw a mailman out there, which reminded me when I was a little kid, my grandfather told me that all mailmen were from England, that's why the steering wheel was on the other side. I believed him. I'd gone to meet the mailman. I'd take my grandfather's false teeth out of his glass and I'd shove them into my mouth just to be weird. I'd go out and meet the mailman. Excuse me, sir, I'm expecting a package you were supposed to arrive today. Guys like that little kid with huge horse teeth. <laughs> with an English accent for absolutely no reason. <laughs> Since I had my grandfather's false teeth, he had to use his spare false teeth. He kept his baby teeth his whole life. And years later, he had to put into fake gums. So the guys were going to look at with huge horse teeth. Excuse me, sir, I'm expecting a package of spokes to arrive today. He looks up the window and sees an 80 year old guy smile with little tiny babies. <laughs> the guy just started crying and he drove away. <laughs> and I'm thinking that happened 49 years ago when I was five, which doesn't seem that long ago, which means I'm going to be in my 60s in about a half an hour. And I thought in 46 years I'll be 100. And I tapped the cop on the shoulder in front of me. I said, you know, I don't feel that bad for almost being 100. <laughs> and he said, what the hell are you talking about? <laughs> he said, what do you do? I said, I do the hokey pokey. What do you do? <laughs> oh, what do I do? Oh, uh, I'm a freelance astronaut. I have my own space program inside my head. I'm going to be going on the other side of the moon soon. I won't be able to talk to you for a few minutes. <laughs> Just then the parrot flew by about 65 miles an hour. They didn't see him, but I saw him. I knew that goddamn parrot. He was green. He liked to land in traffic lights, make red lights look like green lights. <laughs> I said to the cop, you better not go through that, that's not really a green light, that's a parrot inside the traffic. <laughs> the guy said, look, it just shut the hell up. So we were in an accident. We were hit by a truck that was carrying seat belts. <laughs> seat belts all over the place. The parrot's looking down, oh, you should have buckled up, you should have buckled up. <laughs> <laughs>